Should you be a CNC machinist? Is this industry as cool as all the cool kids on LinkedIn say it is, AKA the cringe factory? Or is it more like Facebook? Yes, Facebook, where it is awful salaries, awful conditions, and totally not worth your time. Well, today I'm going to give you an honest answer. Something that I've observed over the last 20 years of me being in this field, and the fact that there hasn't been anyone in my way from me going straight from the bottom to the top of this industry. Since I was 12 years old, I've been working at my dad's shop, learning brown and sharp screw machines, Swiss machines, regular lathes, mills, you name it. And since I was a kid, I've honestly absolutely loved this field. See, child labor laws don't really apply to your own children in America. So gotta hand it to my dad, he, uh, he was a businessman. But either way, I've always loved machining. I've always honestly found it fascinating. And that right there is honestly what has led to me getting to the point I'm at now where I can just come into work on a Sunday and make YouTube videos. But after my dad's shop, I hopped around from company to company until I wound up at Dynamic Machine of Detroit. Now, this definitely was the turning point in my career. Once I worked at Dynamic, pretty much every other day I was going to a new company, seeing how they work, the good companies, the bad companies, the big companies, the small companies, I got to really see it all. And this really was for me the biggest turning point in my career as far as, well, seeing how the whole industry works. So there's a few things that I've learned over my years working in this field, and that's what we're gonna go over right now. Number one, I wasn't the super machinist that I thought I was. In fact, not even close. Really, I had no idea how small my world was in the manufacturing world until I was exposed to the entire industry. And this is why when I get rude comments on my channels now, they don't really bother me because I can tell the type of mindset some people have. It is very similar to the way I thought before I went around to all these companies and was honestly immediately humbled. Two, there are bad companies and there are good companies, but there are also good people and bad people that work at these companies. Not all machinists and not all machine shops are created equal. The main thing you need to know is to not let these bad people drag you down. Don't let them because honestly, you'll blow right by these people if you listen to the rest of this video, I promise. So the third thing I observed was a lot of the successful people I was meeting in this field going around working for Dynamic a lot of them started with nothing. A lot of people that I have met seriously started with a bridge port in their garage, built their own business over time, and have become millionaires. And for me, I couldn't help but notice this. I kept meeting millionaire after millionaire, seeing so many people make it to the very top of this trade without anyone in their way and starting with nothing. It was just mind blowing. The other thing that I found shocking about this was all the people on my side of the industry, the machine sales side of the industry were the same way. I mean, the owners of Dynamic themselves both started with nothing and have built this incredible company from nothing and not even just machine tool distributors. You also have the people who are running most of the companies that sell machines. A lot of the higher up people at those companies, they started with nothing. I could literally go on all day about people I know that started with brooms, got into service, then got into applications, then got into sales and are now CEOs of companies. It's insane how much of this I was observing when I first worked at Dynamic. So I think that really shows you that if you're willing to work hard, you can make it to the top. So those are the things I observed, but now let's focus on you, the viewer. So what can you do and how far can you really take it in this field? What do you need to do to get to where, let's say I'm at or even further, if you wanna be the CEO of one of these companies? What can you really do and what do you need to do? Well, first we're gonna talk about what you need to do and then I'm gonna to explain to you where you can go. Well, I'm gonna be honest, the first thing I will say is you have to definitely be a little smart. You need to at least be able to pass that like, you know, triangle and triangle and square and square hole test. If you aren't naturally mechanically inclined, I don't think you will do well in this field at all. You need to be able to take things apart and understand how they work without really being shown how they work. I know that sounds confusing, but that's really what a lot of machinists do every day for a living. We repair our own machines. We fix why parts aren't running right. It's all just instinctual mechanical inclination that does that. Next thing you need to focus on in order to be successful in this field, and I will say this is the most important thing, focus on what you're learning. I promise you, if you are new to this field or if you are struggling to get ahead in it, the number one thing you need to be focused on instead of salary is what you're learning. Whatever shop you go to, don't worry about the money, really. I know that sounds like BS, but I am promising you it is what I did. You need to start building your knowledge. It is incredibly important. A company like Dynamic is probably the best example of this. Dynamic has never stopped me from coming in here on the weekends and learning whatever machine it is I wanna learn. Now, 
not every shop will be like dynamic, but if you go to a shop and they have all sorts of different machines, take the manuals home, read the manuals, learn the manuals. But I will say this, the manuals are just the beginning. If you're not willing to do that, then don't be surprised if you're not gonna get ahead in this field because the next part I'm about to say is a lot more work. There are countless forms of educational content online right now. So you really don't have the excuse of being able to say something like, I don't understand how G71 works. Seriously, I bet you I could probably pull up five different YouTube videos right now explaining how that one G code works. So yeah, focus on what you're learning and dive into what you know. You will not make more money if you don't know more as a machinist. It is that simple. Get online and start learning stuff if you don't know this field at all. If you are in this field and you've been in it for a long time, then where do you see yourself in 10 years? Do you see yourself making more money or do you see yourself right where you are right now? Because if you aren't trying to learn more and grow, you're just gonna be doing the same job in 10 years. Now for someone like me, that bothers me. I've never been able to look at where I'm working and say to myself, I'm gonna be right where I'm at in three years. If I get that thought in my head, I typically quit or move on to something else. I have to consistently keep growing. It's just who I am. I understand you might not be that way, but I think I'm a good example as far as how far you can get in this field if you're just willing to take a manual home and spend some of your free time learning. It's really all that's being asked of you. Now your learning journey needs to be your priority because this next part I'm about to say is probably going to annoy quite a few business owners. But on top of your learning journey, you kind of also need to be prepared to quit and move on. I know that sounds bad, but the truth is there's a couple reasons for this. Number one, you can't really expect the owner of a company to constantly be monitoring what you're doing and what you're learning and see your progression at his company. I know that sounds crazy, but go try to run a manufacturing company. You're not gonna care about what your mill operators learning or doing or how much better they're making your parts run. You have way more things to worry about. It's just, it just is kind of what it is. So you might be getting better, but the business owner you work at with might not be able to observe it. You might get lucky, you might find a shop that's good at this, and you might only go to one place and work there for the rest of your life. You might pull it off. But in reality, you need to be prepared to quit. I know that's gonna probably annoy a lot of business owners if they're watching this, but it is what it is. I mean, I, 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 I wanna be honest with you in this video. And that's what I've been doing for the last few years, so the last eight years, exactly, actually. I've been going to a company, learning everything I can, and I wanna make more money, and I quit and move on, and I've been climbing a ladder these last eight years. That's what I've done to get to where I'm at. And I'm not gonna to lie to anyone and tell them that's not what they need to do if they're in a similar situation as me. Because most likely you're gonna to have to do something similar if you're a CNC machinist, it, it is what it is. If you are a machine shop owner and you're watching this, maybe try to get better at paying attention to that because you are gonna lose good people if you don't give them more money as they grow. And if you actually are the skilled machinist you say you are, then when you go to the next shop, you're going to get paid more. That is just how this works. That's how I've moved up over the years. Next piece of advice I would have for anybody, and I honestly would have made this the first piece of advice, but I, I'm, I, if I did, I think people would click off because it's kind of cliche, but it's true. The next piece of advice I have for you is don't be awful to work with. Seriously, I cannot tell you how many people I have met in this industry that have gotten nowhere because of their attitude. I know manufacturing can be difficult. I Believe me, I've been through it. I've had to learn machines over a weekend to go work at some customer to do some part that I didn't understand how to make. I, I, I've been in a lot of situations like that. If a business owner comes up to you and asks you to do something like work a weekend or do something and you're constantly giving awful answers about how, oh, I don't wanna do this, it's not my job. If you're constantly doing that, then they're gonna start to see you as a less useful person, which means when raise time comes around, you're not gonna make more money. Or when an opportunity to move up comes around, you're not gonna make more money. Nobody likes working with negative people. I could give you so many examples of where I have made thousands and thousands of dollars off of people who have bad attitudes. I'll just give you one though. I was at a customer doing contract work. This was in between, you know, a stint I was working at Dynamic. And this customer flew me out to a whole different state, got me a hotel, even hooked me up with a convertible rental car. It was pretty cool. And when I went to the shop, he was asking me to do things to fix this Swiss machine, have it running. That, which by the way, I'd never worked on the Swiss machine before, but the whole plane ride, I was reading the manual. So I get there and I could tell immediately that he had an employee that was more than capable of running this machine. So why wasn't he using that employee? Well, I asked him, I said, why don't you just have this guy do it? And he was like, dude, I hate dealing with that guy. Every time I ask him to do anything, he's a pain to deal with. 
And yeah, honestly, I think I'm just gonna fire him as soon as you figure this out. So think about this. I'm getting paid $200 an hour. That is $8,000 a week to go and solve a problem at a machine shop that actually has someone there who's qualified to solve this problem. But because he's so difficult to work with, the shop owner's like, you know what, dude? I'd rather spend eight grand, have this guy come out here, figure all this stuff out, and can you? Because yeah, you're difficult to work with. Yeah, don't be a jerk, man. I'd be surprised where that can get you in life. Not just machining, but like everywhere else. Now, I do want to throw my fellow machinists a bone here and say I do get it. There are a lot of companies out there that aren't great to work at. There are. But I'm also here to tell you that you should maybe have some hope because there are a lot of great companies to work out there. I get it, man. I have been in those situations where you, every Tuesday you hear about John's wife's tuna casserole and how awful it was and you just are constantly living to next to all these negative people and you're not getting ahead of the shop you're working at. I get it. I have been there. I promise you. I do understand that it's really difficult to learn more and it's really difficult to move on and you could be put in a position where you feel like you might be stuck there. But unfortunately, it's up to you to see how far you're going to get. No one's gonna hand this to you, all right? You need to understand that no one is coming to help. If you want to get further in this field, it is up to you and what you're willing to learn. So I understand the shop you work at, there might not be any opportunity, but that's the hard decision you're gonna have to make. You might have to move on or start taking manuals home. I don't know, I'm not you, I'm not where you're at. I'm just telling you what I did to get to where I'm at today. But now I wanna stop talking about shops because there's a part of the industry I feel like nobody ever talks about that I am in and I honestly think is the best side of the industry to be in. And that is machine tool sales. That is what Dynamic does to the place I work at. We sell DN Solutions, Citizen, Fuji, Takamas, Qbox, all these other things. And I think there's two sides. I think you have the, the, the shops where the majority of machinists are, and then you have the machine sales side where you can have people like me who are applications engineers who I honestly think work way better jobs than most machinists. Now this can really depend on the type of person you are, but if you're like me and can't sit still, then a job like this is great for you because I'm constantly moving around to new shops, constantly learning more things, constantly learning new equipment. Like we have a Siemens DVF 6500 behind me. And again, the, the owners of Dynamic do not care about me coming in here and learning on the weekends. I'm literally here on a Sunday right now making a YouTube video. But yeah, I can learn all sorts of new equipment at a job like this. Now, the other reason is because your quality of life will go up working in the machine tool side. Uh, whether you're in sales or applications, you're not working an eight to five anymore. Typically, you go into a shop, you solve their problems and you leave, which is awesome because it kind of blows when you get a machine running and then you have to sit there for the rest of the week running that part just with nothing to do. When you're an applications engineer, you get the machine running, you solve all the problems, you high five the owner on your way out, Good job, and Donnie. then you don't deal with that process ever again. It is actually awesome. That is why I think this side of the industry is better. And I want to talk more about it because everyone in this part of the industry is like on the verge of retiring and all these positions are open. And what's crazy to me is all these positions are taken by people either, I mean, some have degrees, but so many of them don't have degrees. So many of them started with a broom and then got into applications and service and are now the CEO of some machine tool sales company making a quarter million plus dollars a year. It's insane how much of this I've seen. And if you haven't been a part of this side of the industry, whatever you're thinking in your head right now, times that by 10. That's how many positions are opening up. Seriously, if you've haven't been listening to me yet in this video, listen to this right here. Almost every CEO of every single company is going to be retired in 10 to 15 years. All these people need to be replaced. All the high-end sales guys need to be replaced. All the high-end apps guys need to be replaced. All these people are retiring and there is next to nobody to fill these jobs. I mean, the desperation I see in this industry right now, these companies have no idea what they're going to do. For those of you who are willing to put in the work, willing to have a good attitude and willing to learn everything they can when it comes up. If you can get into my side of the industry, the machine sales side, the application side, the service side, whatever, and continue learning and growing, there are so many crazy opportunities for you. It's insane. And that is really what this video is about. Those opportunities are going to open up in the next decade and they're all open for everybody. They could be open for you. You could wind up in these positions really soon. There is a whole side of this industry that is just dying for people right now. I think I've said that three times. So yeah, I hope the point's across.
Another thing about working in the machine sales side of things, especially as an applications engineer, is that it is really rewarding how much you get to teach people stuff. I can't even begin to tell you how many lives I've personally changed. My ex-boss, I don't even know what to call him, uh, his name's Chuck, he works on the citizen line here. He's the same way as me. He's taught hundreds and hundreds of people in the state of Michigan. And he also agrees that it's super cool when you teach people stuff and then go back there five years later and you see how much further they've gotten. Like the people who are really motivated to learn. It is crazy to see how far they can take their careers. So that's another thing that I think most people would find rewarding working on this side of the industry. So there is one last thing I want to talk about, and that is the social media apps you might be able to put yourself on to help get yourself further in your career. Now, this place is what I consider the biggest cringe factory of all time, but you really need to get on LinkedIn. Cringe fest, cringe factory, cringe fest. It's a cringe factory. I know that sounds terrible, but it's where all the CEOs are. Well, that is the last thing I would leave you with. Get on LinkedIn because it's the quickest way to get connected with the current CEOs of these companies and stand out and move ahead in your field quicker. And that's the number one way to do it right now. So yeah, that is basically my two cents on this field, what I've observed over the last 24 years being a machinist and um, a message that I wanna get across to anybody who might be willing to listen. Even if one person listens to this, even if a hundred people listen to this, all these jobs are not gonna get taken up. They are always gonna need people. Anybody watching this even in five years could really do what I'm saying and still absolutely blow by everybody in this field. There's nobody in your way. You're not gonna run into anyone standing in the way of you becoming successful in this field. It doesn't exist. I hope you find this helpful and uh, I'm gonna continue on my journey. You know, hope you have a good day.